Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will be able to understand the exact process. Now gametes are formed from the parent body obviously because let us suppose if this is the father, this is the mother, right? So let us suppose father, this is mother. So this is the parent body. Right? So, this mother has to give the female gamete. Similarly, the father has to give the male gamete. Only then they both will fuse. So, that means the, if the gametes are formed from the parent body. So, these are the parent body. Now, there are two scenarios possible. In human beings, the parent body is going to be what? The body is going to be deployed. But there, here we are not only talking about human beings. We are talking about all animals and all plants. Now there are certain plants where the parent body is haploid. That the parent body has one set of chromosomes. You remember we spoke about the haplontic life cycle, diplontic life cycle, haplodiplontic life cycle. which talked about all these things in your previous class, in class 11th. We spoke about the alternation of generations. So there I told you that some plants have haplontic life cycle where the parent body itself is haploid. Now if the parent body is haploid, that means the parent body has N. Now the gametes we know they are anyways N. Right? It is just that from one parent body you want to produce the gamete. So how it will it be produced? It will be produced by mitosis because mitosis is equational division. So the chromosome number does not get reduced in mitosis. So here also you want the same parent body is haploid. Gamete which you want is also haploid. So you do not want to reduce the number of chromosomes. Therefore it will be formed by the process of mitosis. This is seen in uh, plants of, of belonging to bryophytes and also in monera that is the bacteria, fungi and some algae. Now the second scenario where the parent body is deployed, for example the human beings. So here what happens, the parent body is deployed. Correct? So that means this father where all the body cells are deployed, he has to produce one haploid gamete. Similarly, the mother has to produce one haploid gamete. So basically the chromosome number is getting reduced. So that means it will happen by meiosis because meiosis is reduction division, reductional division where the chromosome number gets reduced to half. Right? So the specialized gamete mother cells are called meiocytes. Now the cells which produce, which undergo meiosis to produce these gametes are called meiocytes. It is derived from the word meiosis and that is why it is called meiocytes. So it is somewhat like this. Let us suppose these are the meiocytes which are specialized diploid cells. This will undergo meiosis to produce haploid gametes. So what happens here? The chromosome number gets halved. Correct? Now, if you have forgotten what is mitosis and what is meiosis, please refer the videos on cell division of class 11. So, there I have explained in detail what is mitosis and what is meiosis. Now, let us take some examples. Let us suppose in human beings, what happens? In human beings, the chromosome number in all the cells of the body is 46. Right? But how many chromosome numbers? So that means the meiocyte basically will have how many chromosomes? 46 will be the chromosome. So how many chromosomes will the male and female gamete have? Half of this. So 23 for male gamete, 23 chromosomes in female gamete. And again these two will combine together to form zygote. Zygote will again be deployed. That is zygote will again have 46 chromosomes. Similarly, if you take a example of some other animal, for example, dog, the number of chromosomes in each cell of a dog is 78. So that means the meiocyte in dog will also have 78 because meiocyte is again a diploid cell. Now this meiocyte will undergo meiosis and it will produce uh, male and female gametes which will have 39 chromosomes each. So 39 in male and 39 in female. Right? So similar is the case for all the uh, organisms with deployed parent body. 
So it is a very simple concept. Wherever your parent body is haploid and your gametes are also haploid. So you want to change haploid to haploid. You do not want to change the chromosome number. So it has to be a mitosis. That is equational division. So let me write here that mitosis is actually equational division. Where you do not want your chromosome number to get reduced. Whereas on the other hand, if you are talking about a diploid parent body. Where uh, you want to reduce the chromosome number to half then obviously you have to opt for meiosis and that is how the gametes are formed inside the body. So examples where uh, diploid parent body is there are pteridophytes, gymnosperms, angiosperms and all animals. So here you can look at the life cycle of a, a diploid and a haploid parent body. So here what happens here you can see these are the male gametes, these are the female gametes. So male and female gametes are formed from the gametophytes by mitosis. So what is this gametophyte? Gametophytes have haploid number of chromosomes. So haploid to haploid. So this is also haploid, this is also haploid. Therefore mitosis. These gametophytes are formed from the spores. So this is also mitosis. So basically here you can see how gametosis, gametogenesis takes place from haploid parent body. Now while in the other example you will see that meiosis take place to form the male and female gametes. So here if you see meiosis take place. Why? Because the chromosome number needs to be reduced to half. So because this is N, this is N. The zygote is diploid. Zygote forms the sporophyte which is also diploid. So from diploid to haploid. That is why this is meiosis and this is how it happens. The gamete, this is how gamete formation takes place. So the first part is done. Now the next part is gamete transfer. So we understood how the gametes are formed. Now both the gametes are ready. The male gamete and the female gametes are ready. But the question is these gametes are not formed in the same place. So the male gametes is formed inside the male body. Female gamete is formed inside the female body. Even if you talk about a plant which has both the male and female reproductive part but they are not formed at the same place. Maybe at two different places in the same plant. Now, in order that the fusion takes place between male and female gamete, the male and the female gamete need to be brought together. So, how do we bring them closer? So, that is what we will see in gamete transfer. So, it is all about bringing the male and female gametes together for the fusion to take place. Because until and unless the fusion takes place, there is no point talking about reproduction. So the question is how gamete transfer occurs in plants and animals. So who actually carries the gamete to each other? So let us have a look at that. So first let us talk about the gamete transfer in animals. How is this taken care in animals? Now in animals there are two possible scenarios. In certain animals both the gametes are motile. The male gametes is also capable of moving. The female gamete is also capable of moving. So both of them move towards each other and then they fuse together. Right? So that, this is seen in few of the fungi and algae. So mostly in the simpler plants this is seen. Now what happens in such scenario? Okay, now both the gametes are capable of moving. So what will happen is the male gamete will move out of the male body. Female gamete will move out of the female body and then they will fuse together somewhere. So what is that somewhere? We'll have to see that. So it's something like this. The male gamete comes, the female gamete comes and then they both can fuse together. But in order to fuse this, you need a medium where these two gametes can meet. Where will they meet? Suppose let us imagine that the female gamete came outside the female body. The male gamete came outside the male body. Now where will the two gametes meet? So they will need a medium where they will meet and they will fuse together. The next scenario is that the male gamete is motile, so male gamete can move, but the female gamete is not motile, so the female gamete will remain where it is. So that means, that obviously means that the male gamete will have to move and it will have to move and reach the place where the female gamete is and the female gamete will obviously be inside the female body. So the male gamete somehow has to enter the female body, correct? 
So now the challenging task is how is the male gamete going to enter the female body? So this is generally seen in higher plants and animals including human beings because in human beings also if you see during the process of sexual intercourse the male gametes enter from the male body and it travels deep inside the female body until it reaches the egg. Now in this case it has been observed that since the male gamete alone is motile so it is the responsibility of the male gamete to reach the female gamete. So it has been observed that since the female gamete is static at one place and the male gamete is moving from somewhere the chances of reaching the female gamete is very less. Therefore a large number of male gametes are produced so that if they are very so many in number at least some of them will be able to reach the female gamete and the female gamete is lesser in number so the number of male gametes is much more than the number of female gametes in these type of animals where only the male gamete is motile so one such example is the human beings that is why the number of sperms which are produced are in millions whereas the number of egg which is produced is just one so now let us look at the gamete transfer in plants now in plants, where is the male gamete? Male gamete is in the pollen grains. And where is the female gamete? It is again the ovum which is present in the stigma. So the pollen grains need to be transferred from anther which is the male reproductive part to the stigma which contains the egg because it, stigma is the female reproductive part. So pollen grains need to be moved from anther to stigma. Now anther and stigma may be present in the same flower. Anther and stigma may be present in different flowers. So how will that uh, transfer take place? So this process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is known as pollination. And there are two types of pollination. One is self-pollination and the other is cross-pollination. So self-pollination is when it, the pollen grains need to be moved from anther to stigma of the same flower. That is called self-pollination. And if it needs to be moved from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower, that is called cross-pollination. Right? So this process of pollination facilitates the transfer of pollen grains to stigma. So this transfer can happen with the help of a lot of pollinating agents like wind, water, insects, birds. So all these things can help in cross pollination because self pollination is within the same flower. So even the slight of, slightest of wind or water can actually pass it. And how is it facilitated inside the flower? So your egg is somewhere here. So somewhere here you have your egg that is the female gamete and these are the stamens. So somewhere here you have the pollens. So it needs to be transferred from here to here. Once it reaches here then you have the pollen tube which will carry the male gamete until it reaches the ovule and discharge the male gametes near the egg. So this is how the male gametes will be carried. Right, so this is how pollination takes place and gamete transfer occurs in plants. So for pollinating agents, insects is one of the most common pollinating agents. You would have actually seen insects hovering over flowers. So why do they hover over flowers? Because they get attracted by the colors and the smell of the flowers. That is why they come near them and they, they tend to carry the pollen grains from one flower to another. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.